Now for this one, I want to maybe try and see first before I take off the, um, the camera and see if we can see if it'll zoom. Hi guys, so today we're in Yall County Cork and uh, we're at Temple Michael Church Graveyard and there's a castle as well. So you can possibly see there black iron gates and I'm actually going to bring you down a little way there, we're right on the edge of the water and uh, there's a big Ballin a tray house is there so I'm going to show you that as well. But. Uh, We've been blessed again with with the weather, um, but it's absolutely freezing cold. Now, right there, you can see the cat, uh, the church. Sorry, and as I said, there's a graveyard here. There's actually a mausoleum, a closed crypt, and then just around the corner, we'll see the the ruins of the castle. And that's it, just there. But um, we're going to go have a look at the the church first. So this church, um, they say it's the 1820s. The castle then is 12th century, and it's one of two in the area. Um, stronghold of the Knight Templars. here. Now it is extremely windy as well as I said it's absolutely freezing but uh, when we come in here first up these steps right there to my left is a huge mausoleum that's the graveyard the church and we'll get to go inside as well and have a look just inside that and then we'll head on to the to the castle now we're going to have a look here. There's a either a family crest or coat of arms. Just at this side, we have some sort of inscriptions here. All right. Right. So we have this at the side of it. Uh, it's for Helena Anna Mary Moore, resting here, 1876, age 25, the beloved and lamented daughter of the Honourable Charles W. and Charlotte M. Smith of Ballinatre and um, that's the, the house that's kind of just across the river there. She died in fate as only those who die in Christ apart. Our blessed name, one blessed name within her lips, one hope within her heart. Uh, presence is fullness of joy at thy hand. There are pleasures forevermore. So quite nice. Um, it's almost like a headstone but it's against the mausoleum we've won here as well but I don't think we're going to I think it says Richard Charles Moore Smith resting here 1888 age just 28 the only and beloved son and I think that's the Honourable Charles and Charlotte again and then we have this here now I wonder where they originally on headstones or part of graves. They were lovely and pleasant in the in their lives and in their death. And I can't quite read that. It's lovely writing there as well. But you can see there that's the the river. And if I go actually down here there's a walk through the, the woods and just in the distance there we might be able to see it even through the trees and I will definitely give you a better look but just off there in the distance is Ballinatray House so back to the mausoleum this says rest in peace 1933 William Perrett drowned in Yall Harbour. 
in our hearts always. There's another one here, sort of leaning forward. In memory of Michael Gould Adams, who died February 1886. Now just have a look. This is the mausoleum, as I was telling you. Look at that for beautiful detail. I'll just zoom in. We've unicorns. We have a bird up the top there. If this will now, a bird. For some reason, my camera is not really focusing right. That looks like I don't know. Is it a dragon or a? Let me see. Maybe you can see that there. It almost looks like a cow to me. And uh, there, you can see it's a helmet. Absolutely gorgeous. We have some sort of writing here, possibly Latin. Now for this one, I want to maybe try and see first before I take off the, um, the camera and see if we can see if it'll zoom. Now I'm probably going to have to take the camera off the, um, the gimbal. Right guys, there it is. All those coffins. Oh. We think we have about six, maybe seven. I'm just going to move. See if I can zoom in a little bit. Now, so we've one the far left, we've one way up the top, but we're going to go around the top as well. We've some just in the corner there. And we've one just here as well. Look at that. Now, now. Amazing. Look at that. And it looks like we have flowers or something on that one. There. There's some sort of writing on it. We have only a very um, small space. Coffin up the top. One down at the bottom right. One over at the far left. One, two, three, four, five, six, just possibly seven. But what we're going to do now is go around to the the iron door. This is like a, a grated um, window area. But we're going to go around the front now and have a look through the door. Right guys, so we're at the, the iron door and you can clearly see there's one right at the very back, kind of in the middle. And that looks like um, a small, small coffin. Possibly um, that of a child, maybe. Try to get the, the vo focus right now. And then just down there. Wow, guys, this one is open. I don't think we're going to see anything in it. But really, really interesting all the same. Wow, guys, what a find. Absolutely amazing. And you can see there the... The window that we were looking through first. Just look at that. I'm afraid if I zoom in I lose. Now. Look at that. Wow. All the flowers on top. It's a pity we can't get in any nearer just to, to read those names. And this is the, the open one as we were talking about there. But we're looking through really, really um, small, small like slits in the, the iron door here. You can see they are all look like they're timber. And that one looks like it was maybe lead inside it. I'm going to move over this way. Maybe I can get now. Now, hold on. It's hard to get the camera to focus. There. 
that's the open one there guys so you can see one right at the very very top right one two three four five six and we've one at the bottom left so pretty cool great find now i'm going to put the phone back on the the gimbal now and we'll we'll move on so that was really really interesting we have a date here 1876 Ballina Trey wrote over it and I don't know whether what that is whether it's Latin or what that is but I'm not going to try pronounce it but look at that and those were the the tiny holes we were trying to get some sort of look at but uh, pretty cool guys so as we walk around the corner now it's just going to get windier but um, we're going to have a look and some headstones at least they are pretty pretty old and quite hard to read now that to me looks like it was maybe an altar First, we'll take a quick look inside the church. Beautiful windows. And I've drove probably two hours this morning to get to here. And uh, after what we've just seen, it was absolutely worth our while. a lot of slate on the ground underfoot. It's strange that the, the window seemed to be bricked up but uh, we got in. Look at that. Wow. That's cool. Lots of graffiti. We actually have a dead bird there on the ground. Now, we we'll just go back out and out into the, the graveyard and out into the cold and the wind. Now, as I said, there's not going to be too many headstones here that we can read. This says 1905 here. Nicholas Pardon Stout something maybe, 72. Ensure and certain hope of the resurrection. Wow. We have a tomb there. I want to go around this side because I believe this was a crypt. Now it's quite wet underfoot and boggy in places. This says erected by John Savage in memory of his wife Bridget Savage who died 1843. Age 36 also his father Dan Savage. February the 18th, 1844, age 70. John Savage died April 1916. Patrick, 1932. Dan, 1960. Jean, 1962. And Thomas Savage. And it just says infant there. May they rest in peace, amen. And it says this place is registered just at the bottom there. I can see lovely designs on this one. Sweet flowers there, but uh, this is what I'm talking about. This mound now it doesn't look like a hole up there, other than just oops, the ground is very uneven. There, this is the part that leads me to believe that it was definitely a crypt. You can see the, the arch there, and the door then possibly down below that. Now look at those headstones, these are huge. And we have a headstone and a footstone in this one. Now I'm just going to be 
mindful of where I'm walking because it's really overgrown and it's quite hard to see where we are walking. Beautiful headstone that I'm not going to be able to get too close to. I might zoom in see if that helps. Gorgeous design on it there. It says erected by Michael McCarthy in memory of his two beloved sons, Charles, who departed. Um, Departed his life 18, 29, age 20, and also his son Daniel. He was only 25 when he died in 1833. Made her souls rest in peace. And uh, that is a huge headstone. And then we have this at the other edge, or at the other end, I should say. Um, I'd love to be able to get in there, but I just don't know what's underfoot. It looks like erected. By Ellen McCarthy, in memory of her beloved husband Daniel, who departed this life 1891, aged 57. So, father and his two sons, and possibly his wife, are all here. But uh, I can't actually describe just how large it is. Now, unfortunately, the wind is kind of uh, blowing the gimbal, and I hope the audio is is okay so you might get an idea there of how big this actually is that's my hand it's absolutely massive and i said the headstone and then the footstone there but just look at the whole area is absolutely gorgeous with another one here but lovely this one is actually really wide as well it's like a, a rose in the center um, I can't see. Is it Elizabeth? No. Body of Dinish Sullivan, who departed this life in 1806, aged 62, and his daughter Margaret. She died May 1807, aged just 23. So also very young and then behind that we have another very very large headstone this one now has caught my eye um husband erected by it's harley is the surname memory of her husband uh, 1805 they're at the bottom age 60 and the rest and it's kind of falling sideways with huge holes there just at the back there behind that one if I zoom in you can see we have little angels there at either side and it's here like the remains of James Byrne and Catherine Byrne um, 1770 on that one guys we have a beautiful marble white one behind it, but um, unfortunately I am not going to chance going across there. You can actually see just how bad, badly overgrown it is. Um, memory of her son John. Crowley, 1802, age 31, and you can just see and get some sort of idea just how much that has, it's kind of sunk into the ground there, and it's a shame because these are actually really, really beautiful headstones. We've a lovely little tiny green one just there, it's kind of like a green colour to it, but uh, as I said, really uneven guys and um, too dangerous to chance going in. But I am wanting to bring you down along here. We have a, a new headstone here in loving memory of the Walsh family. The Red Forge. Hanora Nee McCarthy died 1884, aged 48. Her husband Richard, 1912, aged 82. And their sons Michael died 1953, aged 77. John, and in brackets, the Long Taylor, died 1953, aged 80. His wife Bridget, Nee Savage, 1947 age 74 and their son Thomas 
and Thomas died in 1914 and he was just six weeks old. So somebody has come along for the Walsh family and erected a beautiful new headstone for them and has named them all, which is always really, really nice to see. So um, you can see just there, there is a, a huge amount of headstones. We do have some sort of interesting one there and I'm going to chance going across to it just watching where we walk I mean there's just no way of knowing we see it. I can just see a butterfly actually guys just in the just flying by which is always nice to see and possibly because we are going to read the headstone up here and this is Oliver we have a number Oliver Havens and it looks like E Kent Regiment the Buffs it looks like and November 1918 maybe the 27th of November look at that we have a, a dragon there very very interesting we have a kind of a marble one there I can read it from here Nicholas Crowley and his wife Catherine 1955 we just have an inscription here at the bottom of the headstone though lost Though lost to sight in memory ever dear, rest in peace. So there's a number there. G26056, I believe. Private Oliver. Havens, it looks like to me. And we have the dragon there. Absolutely gorgeous. So, yeah, as I said, and I keep saying, that ground there, I don't know what's under it. It's completely overgrown with nettles and dock leaves and I just can't see the ground underneath my feet to um, even chance walk and it's, it's kind of hard enough just where I am to figure out what is under foot but just there behind the wall as I said it was 12th century and it's the ruins of a castle so we will have to have a look we have steps going down now just to say this place is actually supposed to be haunted there is several stories of monks um sightings of them and i believe one of them was actually through these gates here a lady spotted them and uh, there's also a story of that big house uh Ballina Tray that um, during famine times a lady walked up the steps to the main door to ask for some food and water she was turned away and as she walked backwards down those steps she cursed the estate the house and all that's in it so we are going to get into this castle and um, have a closer look wow you can see already ah, we get through the, the brambles and out of this wind we'll take a look now firstly it's like a huge gaping hole there but as I turn around look at that We have doors, you can see the different levels and the doors. I'm going to try and go out this way, see what we can see, if anything. Look at this. Wow. We have steps. Oh. Steps stop here. 
also look that beautiful arched door. Wow, and up to another a level in there. Now, as I zoom up, look at that. We have the remaining, uh, the spiral staircase remaining right up along to the top. Look at that. And you can see the, the shape of it there. Amazing. This beautiful arched. I presume it was a doorway and we would have Came out here onto another level. And I have the welly boots on. So I'm just worried about slipping. But I do want to have a look in there. Look at that. I'm not going to chance walking in, guys, because I don't know how safe that is. What can you imagine? The stories, the deaths, celebrations. Now, I want to try and get down. And that's always harder, I think, than going up. I just want to slip these wellies on. And I have nothing to hold on to. And I just don't want to keep cutting the video. Give you a proper idea of what happens when you're actually trying to vlog somewhere. And uh, just how hard it can be. We have... An opening there, a little small room here, that doesn't go anywhere, we have a window just there, I think we'll try maybe go up here, out into the wind again, we have another little oops, area here, we have a lot of um, unfortunately rubbish cans and stuff littered around another area here and I can see you probably won't hear me now with the wind wow so this looks right out to the water there look at that and off in the distance if I can steady the camera I don't know whether you'll see that just there in the distance that estate Ballina tree state and I hope I pronounced that right and uh, the wind coming in off there birds or for timber but well, we did see something like this before and it said that it's for roosting birds because I think there's too many um, holes there to hold maybe the structure of a roof or something we have another something here maybe this goes into an outer building of the castle Ugh. oh yeah Now those, I know those holes there for the timber lats that would go across. Another kind of a door there, window up the top, window there, and into this. So this must have been like a, an outhouse maybe. Oh, look at that. And the ivy is completely covered. All that wall there and right up at the top if I can zoom in, right up there, you might be able to see a little window. So really, really interesting. So not only did we find, um, what is that there actually before I leave? It's like a hole there in the ivy, just where the torch is now. You might be able to don't know maybe maybe it was a another door or a window but uh, a really nice find those I believe there's seven coffins in that and then to a closed crypt 
a beautiful headstone and footstone. Our private, our private, um, I think he was Oliver, his headstone. And then this castle, it's almost like, um, I don't know, a maze. There's so many different little parts to it. But uh, I'm surprised it's not all closed off. I don't know how safe it actually is. But that's where we stood. And then, if I can maybe come out this way. Right up there, look at that. An arched door. Look at that. It's really, really amazing. That it's it's still there, twelfth century, as I said. But uh, we're going to make a way back out now, and I'll catch up with you again just when we get back into the the graveyard. Right, guys. So we're back in the the graveyard, and before we go, look at that iron, that railing, absolutely beautiful. Sacred to the memory of George Frederick. Now that was lead writing, and the lead writing is gone. I think it's 1871. There's Edward there as well, but unfortunately, can't read it. But just look at the scenery behind it. We have a tomb there, and then just if we turn around, we have these here on the wall, just at the entrance of the gate says in loving memory of Henry Horace Digby born 1905 died 1969 his brother Captain John Rowland uh, born October the 4th 1903 killed in action in Greece December the 13th 1944 interred in the British Military Cemetery at Falcon near Athens his brother Brian died in 1971 interred in England sons of Captain Rowland and Mrs Alice um, from this area Banatre County Waterford to live in the hearts we leave behind is not to die this memorial is erected by Catherine Mary Fleming and this is in memory of Catherine Mary Fleming herself Temple Michael that's the area here 1930 to 2015 and these ones then on the wall. Um, I don't think we'll be able to read it, maybe. Uh, Captain, late 3rd Battalion, Leinster, Regiment Grandson of the 5th Earl of Mount Castle, it looks like. Um, January. 1959 it looks like and also his beloved wife Alice That's that one and then this one uh, Something something Smith um, Third son I don't know is that Grace or G R I C E maybe Smith Esquire and Mary Broderick Smith upon the tra eighteen sixty four maybe there. So all very very interesting. Um, before we leave, I'm just going to walk down. Whoops! Through these big black metal gates. Oh, look at these. These look like they're electric operated. Or at least the, the middle two are. Back out into the wind now again. Just look at that. Amazing. But uh, I just want to quickly show you the the house that's situated at the far side 
of the water here. And we actually have, I can see here, some people down below um, at the end of this little area fishing. So I'm going to try and find an area that's clear enough that we can just see the house. I might have to go down a little bit further. And then any information I get, we'll pop it over. You can just see it barely there. Um, there's the castle. We have a bit of a clearing here. So hopefully we'll be able to see it then. Just look at this area, it's absolutely gorgeous. And uh, of course, way up there is where we were looking out of, right out here. And there we have it. That there. And uh, we were just talking to someone locally here who has said that um, they are somehow connected to the royal family and uh, I wouldn't, I would believe that completely. Um, Lady Diana never got to visit here but uh, Camilla Parker did. So interesting, beautiful area. Beautiful home, beautiful estate, the castle, the mausoleum, the coffins. It's been a, a worthwhile trip. We've hopefully another one to do before we have to um, head home, unfortunately, in Ireland. It gets dark now, around five o'clock, and sometimes even a bit earlier, depending on the day. It's bright now, so maybe we have a few more hours of light left. So guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe if you haven't. I uh, I can see that a lot of people that watch my videos aren't actually subscribed. So please subscribe, um, hit the notification bell, share if you can. We're at, we are growing and uh, hopefully we will continue to do so and uh, can't do it without you. So take care guys, we'll talk to you soon, God bless.